This pretty much just looks like cooked chicken. This is not a new wound. If you were here to smell it, you'd be really grossed out too. So we've got a neat Argus monitor here. It has a really big wound on its body wall. And it's pretty infected. It smells really bad. But what we're going to do is go to surgery and just kind of explore how advanced the wound is and if we need to resect any more tissue. So what I'm doing right now is just inducing anesthesia. We've already given it a little bit and that's why she's pretty chill and laid back at the moment. I'm just going to give it a little bit more here. Well, so we're in the vein. You can see that blood coming in the syringe. It's called a caudal vein stick. I'm just going to give it a little bit more. Get this guy in a little bit deeper plane of anesthesia. It's going to make setting up for surgery much easier. Nice look inside the mouth. Hopefully a little bit less jaw tone. You can see right behind the tongue. That's where we intubate and keep the airway open. And it's closed right now, but she'll open it up in a second. There you go. See it open? So I debrided away most of the devitalized or dead and infected tissue and it came out pretty easily for the most part in some main chunks here like this, it's kind of like right here, and just kind of peeled off along with these other pieces. And you can see it just looks like, looks like some cooked chicken or something, pretty gnarly stuff. So what I'm doing now is just going through and getting off the last little bits of infected or necrotic or devitalized tissue. And so if you actually take a look closely at the wound, you can see the pulling it. You can see these white areas like right here, and right here, right here, 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 all this stuff. That's all a devitalized tissue. So I'm just kind of gently working on scraping that away. That's going to be the most challenging part of this procedure is just getting rid of all that tissue. Uh, once we do, then we'll be able to really scrub it up and clean it up. This wound, I do not have nearly enough skin to close. And so we're actually going to do a modified, um, basically post-operative care that's going to involve daily treatment to this area on the skin. Uh, with topical, you know, antiseptic medication and antibiotics and whatnot, on top of the, the systemic antibiotics we'll be giving. So that's what we're going to keep working on here. It could be a little bit, but hopefully we'll be out of surgery uh, sooner than later and um, get this guy waking up. So I'll keep working at that, and then, uh, and then again, we'll, we'll flush him out, clean him up as much as we can, and wake him on up. Thank you. All right, so we've debrided all the necrotic or dead or apparently infected tissue. And we're getting some fresh bleeding on, on all the edges of the skin and even in the subcute tissue here. That's good. That tells me that's good, healthy living tissue and it should granulate over and heal well. What I'm spraying on now is some dilute betadine. This is just an antiseptic solution to help just clean out the last little bits. We had a couple little pockets that were a little bit concerning. One right here. And the biggest concern with an injury like this is does this injury go in internally into the animal? Okay, does it go past the muscles and the ribs and everything, actually next to the internal organs like the lungs and the liver and in, in the area inside the body, which is called the coelom in a reptile. And so with, with probing and general dissection around there, I think we're clean. I think we're okay. We took an x-ray. There was no evidence of air bubbling or pocketing or anything like that of that nature going into the body. So I don't think we have to worry about that. If we did have to, we'd have to do what's called a coelomic explore. And that basically means open it up see where, where it communicates from the outside and flush it out really aggressively with fluids and, and antiseptic potentially. Um, and that's pretty scary stuff. That really changes the prognosis and the, the complexity of the surgery. But luckily we don't have to do that. So what we're gonna do is called a tie over bandage. And that just means basically put a little, bunch of little loops all around the skin here. And we're gonna be able to put gauze and bandaging across it and then tie it over like a shoe, uh, like shoelaces. And just change that out every one to two days. So that's what we'll be doing next, and yeah. So we're just tying in some little loops here, and that's so we can put the bandage on top and then tie it over like some shoelaces, and I'll show you that when we get to that part. Basically, we're just making little loops, so I'm just taking a little pinch of skin. So much harder to see without the lights. So 
what we're working on here is called a wet to dry bandage. And the concept behind this is you actually just do a thin layer saline soaked uh, gauze and basically that gauze has some salts in it and it's, it's designed to, to essentially draw out fluid and infection. And so this is something you can't leave on for a long time. In fact, you usually have to change it every one to two days. Um, but it's great for open wound management like this because we can't, we don't have enough skin to close over. It's got to dry out and close open. And so for now, we're just going to try to bring out as much infection and inflammation as possible um, just simply with the electrolytes of the fluid. And then what we'll do is just change it out um, every one or two days. And then eventually we'll just start putting like an, on, an antibiotic ointment on top. So I'm just going to put some gauze right on top of that. And then, let's see. And then we'll, uh, we'll put a little bit of another material on top of this and start tying over. So here's our final bandage and it's tied on. Again, it's called a tie over bandage and we're doing a wet to dry uh, underneath that. And so what I'm doing here is just cutting the, uh, the nails of this back leg because my biggest fear is that this goanna is just going to go boop and just like start knocking out stitches and taking the bandage off. And if we can just get a couple good days of, um, of this wet to dry bandage, that would really go a long way. And then we can just probably treat topically and maybe not even have a bandage at all. It's, that's the tough thing with these exotics is actual realistic management at home. It's just not as straightforward as like dogs and cats and some of these other animals. Because uh, it's not easy to put on bandages or give medications and whatnot. We're about two days post op, and this monitor is doing pretty well, nice and active. And so here's our lesion, and I took off the wet to dry bandage, and now I'm just going to be flushing it. Just try to rinse all that stuff off there. We're probably just going to start a topical antibiotic treatment. And that will be long term. Lizards and reptiles in general take a long time to heal. Um, and so wounds like this can, can be managed for months just because of the nature of their healing. Keeping them warm obviously expedites that. But uh, in general, they do take a bit longer. So a big go in this back. And we're here for a bandage removal, reassess the wound, and decide if we want to do another tie over bandage. So here's our tie over that we had right here. I've taken that off. We've got a nice layer of um, the, the kind of early signs of granulation tissue. And basically, it's just inflammatory cells and some protein cells that are just kind of forming a nice protective layer over the wound. And so, honestly, I'm going to just hold off on putting another, another bandage on because I think we're going to have an easier time at home managing with the topical medications in the oral, get a systemic and injectable medications. And hopefully that'll be enough to just get things to kind of close up and heal as we want them to. Definitely a handful still. All right, so I'm just gonna start trimming these out. She'll let me, let me come in closer here. So taking sutures out isn't a big deal. Animals don't feel that when you take them out. They just kind of slip right out, as you can see. So you just got to cut one edge and uh, remove them. It's pretty easy stuff.